This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. So I'm James Skonyak, I'm the Executive Vice President of Corporate Affairs and Operational Services for Bruce Power. So uh, today we uh, had a very exciting announcement. As you may recall, uh, back in early April, it was actually on April 1st, we announced that um, Bruce Power would be committing to 600,000 pieces of personal protective equipment to be donated uh, locally and across the province to support uh, frontline healthcare long-term care, first responders, uh, and a range of other needs uh, in the response to, to COVID-19. So, you know, obviously we've been working really hard to fulfill that commitment. Uh, we've been working hard to fulfill that commitment really through two main sources. The first is to, to use our supply chain network and our, our capacity beyond Canada to, uh, to procure personal protective equipment to make sure that we obviously have adequate amounts of personal protective equipment for our own employees in certain cases, but, but more importantly, to, uh, to, to meet the commitment we made. We've also been working with our suppliers so they can retool their operations, whether that's uh, manufacturing gowns, whether that's manufacturing face shields. And so we've been working really hard on that procurement and retooling effort. Uh, today, we were pleased to announce that by the end of April, we're, we're on track to doubling that commitment. And by the 30th of April, we'll have uh, uh, distributed and donated 1.2 million pieces of personal protective equipment uh, across the province. Um, and, uh, and it really consists of uh, those famous N95 masks, surgical masks, uh, protective gowns, gloves, uh, and protective face shields uh, primarily. I mean, you know, there's no doubt that we're we're in the midst of a of a health crisis. That's pretty obvious when we look at a pandemic. Um, but we're also in the midst of an economic uh, uh, crisis as well, where um, obviously to respond to the pandemic and do the right things from a health perspective, we we've closed large portions of the economy down. Uh, there's there's no area of the economy that is not negatively impacted by this, but in particular. We have, there's obviously, you see in the, the reports of people filing for unemployment and the associated government programs, a lot of people out of work, uh, a lot of people not able to go to work to, to their jobs that they, they previously uh, uh, were able to, to earn a living on. Uh, and, um, you know, and this from an economic perspective has impacted those individuals. And so, you know, now more than ever, we have to recognize there are People in our community that that are that are in a time of need, and and when we have members in the community that are in a time of need, it's incumbent upon all of us to to do what we can and to to support them. And so, recognize that extra pressure on food banks. We we announced a three hundred thousand dollar commitment to the thirty or so food banks in uh, Grey Bruce and Huron counties. And actually, currently we have a fundraiser underway across site. Uh, that will wrap up the early part of next week where we're targeting to raise another another $100,000 through employee donations to the food bank. So obviously a really important uh, and challenging time for our food bank. So we thought getting uh, funding directly into their hands as soon as possible uh, was really important. And, and that's really been the focus. Additionally, we've also provided those food banks personal protective equipment, uh, recognizing that uh, you have a lot of volunteers, people volunteering to, to do that important work, people using the food banks. And so we wanted to make sure there was, was some personal protective equipment for, to protect people, uh, util not only utilizing the food banks, but volunteering at the few food banks. Um, we also, by August 27th, will have distributed 55,000 bottles of hand sanitizer. It's through a local partnership we have with the Wismer House in, uh, here in Port Elgin. Uh, they're actually, we're working with them for, our, for them to start production of hand sanitizer in the near future. Um, we were also able to, to secure 60,000 liters of hand sanitizer that we've purchased that we will uh, distribute throughout the region. Obviously, a lot of focus on masks and 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 physical distancing, and those are are important. But 
clean hands, whether that's washing with, with soap and water for 20 seconds or hand sanitizing is really important. So our expectation is, is the 55,000 bottles of hand sanitizer, what that's going to do is, is allow us to get hand sanitizer in areas that, um, that people have not been able to secure it because of the, um, uh, because of the supply situation. Well, I think uh, going back, um, you know, we've done what a lot of organizations have done. We, we have to recognize that, um, you know, we're, we're the kind of operation that the province still relies on to generate electricity. Um, and also we're an operation that the world requires and relies on to provide medical isotopes for medical equipment sterilization. So our focus was really to take a long-term view of this. We reduced the number of people working on site over what would normally be the case by about 80%. Um, and what that allowed us to do was to put in place a lot of protective measures on site. So when you, if you were to go in the plant, uh, you would have a, your temperature checked, thermal uh, monitoring, um, obviously all the social distancing that, that is required from public health, uh, protective barriers, uh, hand washing, hand sanitization, cleaning, uh, extensive cleaning of work locations before and after use. And we've also provided people the opportunity to wear masks in the workplace. So, you know, just like, um, uh, you know, other areas of personal protection we would put in from a health and safety perspective, we, we've done that throughout our operation. And, you know, we really appreciate the input that um, the medical officer of health for Gray Bruce's office has provided us with that even including a site visit. So we made sure we put that, that in place, but the, you know, the primary piece was reducing that volume of people on site by about 80%. We have about 4,000 uh, people directly employed by Bruce Power and indirectly employed by Bruce Power working from home as well. Those are folks that are doing uh, engineering and other support services. Well, I mean, look, I think everybody is, uh, is trying their best in this situation. I think this is a you, you really see uh, communities coming together. You see, you know, the extensive work that organizations, volunteer groups, individuals are doing throughout the community. You see levels of government working together, whether that's our municipal government with our provincial government and our federal government. You, you very clearly, you know, we should all be really proud of how various levels of government and institutions have come together to deal with what is a very challenging situation. Is it a is it, is it a perfect response? It never is, but I think we, we got to look at the progress that we've made in a very short period of time as, uh, as pretty significant. And, you know, I, I, you know the, the, the real message that we continue to reinforce with people uh, in our organization, but broadly is, you know, we need to continue to, to trust the science. We need to continue to uh, listen to what the listen and act on what the medical professionals are telling us to do. Uh, we need to reach out and help those uh, small businesses who have been uh, quite uh, uh, impacted by this. And that's through all, all of our actions in a small community, making sure we're buying local, we're, we're ordering takeout food, we're thinking about our local vendors first and foremost, but also recognizing there's folks that are having a tough time putting food on the table and we all need to, uh, to help out. So, I mean, I'm just, you know, uh, as an individual, personally, I, I, I just am so proud uh, to be part of a, an organization like Bruce Power that's doing this work, but more importantly, proud to be a part of the, the community. I think we, there's a lot of people doing a lot of great things, and um, it's in tough times where we bring the best out in people. I think, uh, you know, as, as I'll start by saying, as, as a rural community, uh, and fellow Canadians, uh, we can extend our heartfelt support to the rural communities in Nova Scotia, and especially to the families experiencing such tragic loss of family members. And I, I would like to honour the lives lost uh, just with a minute of silence. so people at home can join us as well.
so thank you. There will be some tough days ahead, but we'll all support them. Um, I'll go on to the next, uh, in, in case uh, it's so hard, there's so much information these days, in case you missed this item, this media release from Bruce County on Friday, there was a purchase a purchase of something called Clean Flow Healthcare Mini Machines, and it's a partnership between Bruce County, Huron County, and, and Bruce Power. And this is, if needed, uh, to sanitize personal protective equipment for frontline healthcare workers if there are shortages in the future. So the, it's, they're going to purchase them and have them ready. If they are needed, Abraflex in Paisley will not only house the equipment, but will operate the equipment. They have the, uh, the expertise. So it's another way um, we'll be prepared. And the uh, Grey Bruce Public Health Update on April 17th. Uh, those tested for COVID-19 can now access the results online about five days after being tested. So you would check the Grey, Grey Bruce uh, website for more details. And the health unit now lists all the groups that are a priority for testing. And of course, it has the capacity to, to test more people now. There seem to be, there's more kits available. So on a, a more positive note again, I'm still welcoming entries to the Mayor's Challenge and you can look on kingcardentalks.ca. Uh, the email is mayorschallenge at kingcardon.ca and you can check there. Uh, I have challenged all children and teens to tell me what you have learned. How to cook a meal, bake a cake for your family, how you regularly FaceTime, Zoom or phone friends and elderly people especially to show you care and in some way can you do anything for them. And uh, any other way you continue to help our community. Uh, I have great faith in children and teens uh, with their creativity and their ability to help us and do their part. So I would like to hear about them. So in conclusion, I'd like to congratulate each resident in the municipality of King Carden. Uh, you are continue, continuing to save lives by practicing social distancing and proper hygiene protocols to help in this fight against COVID-19. However, as it gets longer, it's getting harder to keep it up, I'm, I'm sure, but we need to persevere. Uh, the, the numbers still aren't where we want them. We still need to flatten the curve more or um, have the cases go down first and, and then it will be reevaluated. So the good news is that our health services are well prepared. The other thing I want to mention is if you walk in our trails, help us keep them open by making sure you practice social distancing. Social distancing and staying home except for essential errands are the main tools we have. So let's continue to be King Card and Strong and support each other.
Um, staff has been receiving numerous inquiries from local groups as to whether they're going to be able to go ahead with their events and special events this year. And so far, staff has been saying that events on municipal property would not be able to take place until further notice. Um, but it's not really fair to event organizers to not give them a date because many of these events require significant planning and expenditures and we feel it's prudent to provide clarity to them. So we discussed this as a team and we feel that um, June 30th would be an appropriate date and we would review that prior to the date to determine if an extension is warranted. Um, as you've probably heard, the Scottish Festival and Pride Parade have already been cancelled. So, um, you know, many event organizers are looking into July and beyond um, and making the decision not to proceed. But this June 30th date is being used by several other municipalities. The clerk's department staff have communicated with special event organizers um, to let them know that this is what we're thinking and. Um, we wanted to discuss it with council before we did any formal communication to the public, um, but the clerk's department does have a media re release ready to go in, in the event that um, council does not have any issue with this. The next item is the recovery center at the Davidson Center, and that is, uh, has been progressing very well over the past week. Um, our project team on behalf of Team Carden is our Fire Chief Kevin McNeely, Shane Watson, our Fire Prevention Officer, and Frank Trelucas um, from the Recreation Department has really been assisting with a lot of the issues around the facility. Um, they're working with the Great Bruce Public Health Unit and Bruce Power to complete this project. Um, the electrical is complete, the partitions are installed, beds have been delivered and will be staged. And there will be more information coming out in a media release. Um, I, it is expected this week, I was told today. So um, we are working on an agreement with the health unit. Um, it would be, um, you know, a memorandum of understanding as to um, what their responsibility is for the facility. You know, we're ensuring that we're recovering any costs that we may have in terms of the electrical, um, you know, any damage to floors or those types of things. And our staff have done an excellent job of documenting the existing con condition of our facility. Um, and then we would have to look at uh, having a separate agreement if the facility does become operational um, as a hospital. So. Um, that would be with whoever the operator of that facility is going to be. We don't know at this point in time. And um, so we would have to work out all of the details of those agreements. We have contacted our insurer, but until we really know the details of who would be operating that facility, um, we can't really, uh, they can't really address the insurance issue the insurance would have to be provided by that operator, but we need to know more details. We are told that we would have, you know, at least a week of lead time um, before a facility would, the facility would actually become operational. So it wouldn't be, you know, an immediate decision. So we would be able to work on some of those details. So I will bring a full report to council um, when the details uh, have been ironed out. But um, I just wanted to provide that update, and I'm, I'm really proud of our staff. They've worked very hard to make this project a uh, reality, and it, it does provide a, a good service to our community, even though we do hope we never have to use it. Um, um, so the remaining items uh, don't require a lot of discussion, so I will just go through them, and, and then you can have any questions at the end. Um, the senior managers have reviewed our capital project list, uh, with respect to, um, you know, comparing it to the essential services list and the treasurer's repairing, uh, preparing a report for a future meeting, which will have some suggestions for projects for deferral. Um, and we are also in the process of reviewing our operating budget impacts, including the potential loss of revenue. Um, for emergency services, the countywide burden ban uh, was issued, so that includes the municipality of St. Cardin. Um, 
I don't believe there were any enforcement issues in, Car in King Carden, but there were some uh, in other areas in the county and police have been involved uh, with that. And we have received clarification that even though the marina is closed, um, the OPT rescue boat will be will be put in the water so that um, you know they can provide that service if there are any boats that do make it out onto the water. Our emergency control group is meeting weekly, and we just receive updates from all of the agencies. Um, Municipal bylaw enforcement is collaborating with the OPP on enforcement of the provincial orders. So the OPP is taking a very measured approach. They're, uh, they're focusing on education first. There haven't been any real issues with compliance when they have gone out and spoken to people and they haven't laid any charges to date. Um, but our bylaw enforcement is playing a role in that. If we do receive complaints from um, people about businesses that are not essential, that are operating, um, they're going out and, and verifying the information and uh, collaborating with the OPP on those uh, enforcement issues. Um, one thing that I do get many inquiries about, and maybe I'm guessing Council does too in your inboxes, um, there seems to be a, a thought in the community that you know, cottagers are not allowed to be here. Um, Non-residents are not allowed to be here. And so we get people trying to report to us to say, you know, we know that people are, are in cottages. And again, it is a recommendation for people not to travel. They want people to stay in their homes. Um, but there really is no um, sort of enforcement around that. So that's um, something that we're we're communicating to people is that you know we really want you to follow the rules and try to limit your exposure and exposing yourself to other people and if you have a home stick to it um, and some of other municipalities are sort of changing their messaging around that because we know our cottagers are here um, but the idea is you're not to be going back and forth between multiple homes um, you know, on an ongoing basis, because that really is the thing that increases the spread. So we, it's something that we get a lot of inquiries about. Um, we are continuing with our weekly meetings with the South Bruce Gray Health Center, the CEO, Michael Barrett, um, and he's discussing all of their efforts to increase, increase capacity at the Owen Sound Hospital. So um, Owen Sound is where patients will be ventilated if they need to be ventilated for a longer period of time. Um, King Carden and Walkerton just have ventilators that would be, you know, for a shorter period of time in order to get them ready to transport. Um, King Carden and Walkerton have been identified as COVID hospitals in Durham and Chesley are non-COVID. And then, of course, we have um, these recovery centers that are being implemented um, one in Owen Sound, one in Concordon, and one in Hanover as well. We have our weekly meeting with the Medical Officer of Health and County officials. Um, Dr. Era is continuing to send out his daily situation report that uh, talk about the number of cases that we have within the region. And you will see that they have become more detailed and they are now including location information, which was not previously done when there were only a few cases within the region. And the rationale for, um, for now including that location information is so that people realize it is everywhere and that we all have to be cautious. Um, and so they, they are going to continue to update those, um, those reports daily. I also do have a weekly meeting with all of the county CAOs and we collaborate on our approaches to the various provincial direct, uh, directives and different communication initiatives that we have and how all of us are handling uh, the various issues, working remotely, strategies and mental health issues and enforcement and all of those types of things. Um, our communications team has been keeping the stay home, save lives message on a regular rotation. 
and the community has become a lot more engaged with the Facebook site and has been commenting and sharing a lot more than normal. Um, the communications team does more monitoring uh, than they have previously and they do that in the evenings and weekends too because of the high amount of traffic and we feel it's really important to make sure that people are getting the correct information and to, to try to shut down any incorrect information that's out there. Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. The economic impact of COVID-19 has drastically affected food banks across Canada. Many only have enough food for the next two weeks. But when you donate to Food Banks Canada, every dollar can be stretched further to help our fellow Canadians, your neighbours who are in need. It's time to step up to the plate and donate. Please give what you can at foodbankscanada.ca. For my kind, there was one place we were never allowed to go. Your world. What are you gonna do? Show this world for what it really is. 